All right, well, we've been out here most of the day today, and uh, well, the rotisserie's up, and the car is on rotisserie. Something noticed or realized after getting it on rotisserie is that these lock bolts are gonna be a problem. So I grabbed these jack stands, I'm gonna go grab two more, and we're lowering the car down to set it on that. And then I'm gonna take that loose and rotate that mid bar sideways so the bolt comes out on the side. These ones on the actual rotisserie should be plenty enough out of the way, but that'll add a little bit more clearance and give me a little more comfort so when the car rotates it's not gonna scrape across the top of the roof. The front one's good, it's you know it's sitting right here. It'll be the cowl area, which is plenty of clearance. Now it's an eight foot to rafter from the concrete. The center beam is roughly just under a foot, 11 and a half, something like that, 10 and a half, somewhere in there. So I should have about six inch of gap, top and bottom. If I managed to get my holes perfect. Now I might end up having to actually adjust out the car to where it's not perfect balance just to get it into one of these locking holes, which won't be a huge problem, but it'd be nice if they actually end up right. I mean, technically, since I've got six inches of play on each side, I should be able to just have either the gap between the center beams or the gap from the rafter a little bit tighter than the other, and it should be fine. But anyways, the, uh, the car is lifted on rotisserie right now though anyways, so. I've got these all tightened down. Uh, roommate picked up some nuts for these. And hopefully I didn't forget to snug down any of these bolts. Right now, these mids are locked. Uh, everything should be tightened all the way. Oh, except for these. I have to snug those down. But all these were impacted down. Those were impacted down. I had to do a wrench on the under side mounts these and these were all impacted all those mid locks those were impacted a while back and this middle thing's just tightened down by hand it's doesn't really need to be tightened and that was impacted with just a little battery dugga dugga but just wanted to do a quick update of where we stand on the car and the rotisserie like I said, it's, uh, it's been a long, fun experience. So, for anybody that hasn't seen this one covered, uh, pulled it out to rotate it and got rid of the crappy bag, I go, gotta go get an actual engine bag or a big trash bag to wrap it in. But this is the engine that was in it. If anybody had picked up watching later on and didn't see any of the early videos where this was being built or the early startup, um, it's, forged I-beams, uh, eagle rods, trick flow heads, obviously trick flow valve covers, MSD mechanical billet distributor. It's locked out because I have an, uh, an MSD 6AL2 or whatever, the programmable ignition box. Um, Keith Black pistons, I think, flat tops. And I had to get these Jumbo Summit breathers because I kept having a little bit too much uh, just blow by whatever I got these inserts that are baffled on the inside it's like a big uh, cylinder it's got holes going all the way around it and it just has this lock ring that goes on so I had to drill these valve covers to put those on but uh, that's her Edelbrock RPM air gap intake and it's got a quick fuel blow through carb that's on that blue bag up there. Anyways, eventually I'll get this back. And uh, since recent, I found out that Fram is crap. I used to use these just because they were easy to take on and off. But uh, recently discovered that Fram filters are like the worst possible pieces of junk ever. So I'll be running something better from now on. Uh, the Motorcraft filters are actually really good. I think the Nappas are actually really good. And 
mobile ones if you want to spend the extra five bucks or whatever it is per filter. It's real good. I don't know. I'll have to go back and review the, the video where they cut them all open and compared them all. But pretty much everything was almost identical on the inside except these crappy frames that are shitty-ass cardboard and paper filters that fall apart. But that's it, guys. So, uh, I might make another video if I come back out here and balance this thing out and get it to where it's actually spinning. But I just wanted to do a quick update, show everyone where it's at, and uh, do another video here soon of uh, another project I picked up. It's gonna be a fun little toy to work on. It's uh, hopefully gonna fund this project getting finished, or at least fund the front suspension stuff. But uh, I'll do a quick teaser of it in a little while. Later, guys.